Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we continue with our ghillie plans including this ghillie shuttle and also the claw meant to grab the Mark 1 cabin from the surface of ghillie. Now people pointed out that the claw really required the Mark 1 cabin to be upright and that is a flaw because it could be lying flat. That is something I forgot about. Uh, but there is the possibility that the engineer could make it upright either by using the engineer skill or otherwise just using the jetpack and knocking it. Uh, so there are possibilities even if it's flat that we can still salvage the situation. But yeah, it is a problem. So we'll have to see about that. And yep, well, there's probably other things I didn't think about too, but that is in the way of things. Uh, so it's been a little bit of a time since I posted a video in this series, uh, more than a week, which is unusual. And that is because of all the shuttle things, because of the 40th anniversary of the first launch of the space shuttle. And some of the shuttle things I did, I was producing videos on YouTube, but uh, you may have missed that I flew around the world in an F-15 while listening to the first shuttle mission on Twitch. And I listened to the audio, full audio, though condensed so that there wasn't any silences uh, on each of the days, on the appropriate days. So this was basically an hour, uh, eight hours each day, maybe a little bit more than eight hours each day. And the astronauts went to sleep and then I went to sleep. So <laughs> uh, I managed to complete the around the world trip, though people will point out that some of my landings were a bit dodgy. Uh, but Edwards to Edwards, and that was texting. So that was what I was up to. That's why I didn't produce any other videos for this series in the meantime, because I was busy with that sort of thing. But now I'm back and we will continue with our normal things. So uh, we are here with Megan and we need to transfer over to Eve. Okay, we're going up. So the fact that we're pointing a little bit at the surface probably isn't a problem. And go. Long burn time though. Okay, we're a little bit off on that, but we'll uh, figure that out on the mid-course adjustment. We could technically air break at Eve, but I get the feeling that that's probably dangerous. Sort of feel like we would want the ascending node somewhere out there instead. That probably is a better idea even though we still have more inclination there. All right, uh, well, we'll do that sort of thing, and then we'll have to match orbits with Gilly at some point. And do we have enough? Is the question. So I'm just going to put a mock matching burn to see how much it might be. Uh, that should be about right. 589. So we're doing 350 at the mid-course adjustment, 222 there, so let's say 580, and then another 590 there. That'll leave us with a tiny amount of delta V left, but if we're already in orbit of Gilly, then we don't need a whole lot to land and get more fuel in theory, assuming that works out for us. I'll uh, get rid of this node we don't need, but... Yeah, so in theory we've got enough, and it is on its way. Let's see which one we need to deal with first in the tracking station. They're like really close together to recovery rig. Uh, it looks like the shuttle is first. I'll time warp here. It's so nice having a pilot who can actually turn to the maneuver node. Alright, and go. So some comments made a positive note about how I managed to make a shuttle work on the first launch. Obviously, this is because of a lot of experience with shuttles. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the, a lot of pain and suffering went into it, so uh, by, by now I know what works, but uh, ultimately th there's no magic. I had to see a lot of things explode before I managed to be a get to the point where I could put together a shuttle and sort of make it work. Of course, we don't know about re-entry yet, but the launch part and still, you know, they're finicky bits about launch, you know, some wobbliness and stuff. Well, it's a little bit further up, but I think it'll do. Okay, so that is what we're going to do when we get there in 23 days, but we need to deal with 
the capture rig, the recovery rig, recovery rig, I think it was. Keep forgetting the name of this thing. All right. I mean, you look at it and you go, well, what are the chances it would work? <laughs> That's, uh, uh, anyway. And perhaps I want to give it the same inclination situation as the shuttle. Doesn't look like it's quite as convenient from this situation, but maybe if we slide that over a bit. Okay, close enough. And that will be about the same. And here we go with the new and improved Poodle. Go. Okay, that should be close enough. Comms still seem to be working. Uh, this is a little bit weird. We're like right next to each other. Okay, readjusted that node and we are on our way to Eve. Let's see which one we do first. Looks like the recovery rig is first on the capture burn. Okay, but our line back is going this way. Kerbin is over there. So at our periapsis, we may not have the best communication depending on what other satellites are relaying. Now we've got some stuff that seems to relay things like this EVE Mission 2 relay and EVE Mega Station ship and EVESAT. We might have more satellites relaying stuff around EVE than we do around Kerbin. Um, we'll see. If not, I mean, even if we go past and have to capture, uh, get uh, communication with Kerbin on the opposite side, we can still capture. It's just not going to be very efficient. So I'll just wait and see. The one thing we don't want to do is accidentally not have communication when we start the engine. I mean, when we start the engine, we lose communication and it keeps running, but it looks like we'll be all right. Precision here is not too important, so we got that done. We have captured, and now we're gonna have to wait for Gilly to sort of arrive at that location. So, let's see, or close to it anyway. There. Wow. Well, that's lucky. That's pretty close. I'll man. I'll adjust the adjustment later on. Let's just switch to the shuttle. For this, we don't need to worry about communications. The burn time is uh, probably not that long, even though the engines take a lot of time, have taken a lot of time to do the other burns. Let's make sure we've got all the stuff that was required for the outpost on Gilly. Yes, we do. So all we have to do is land it on Gilly and that contract is fulfilled. The ISRU stuff is a bonus. Well, also, we have to be able to get back, in theory. Go! Capturing lower around EVE would have been more efficient, but it's probably not back that big a difference. Maybe 10 meters per second to 20. Okay, now... What are the chances we get a nice gilly encounter with this? Probably low. We might have to adjust our... Oh, no, that's not too bad. And it's actually a shorter amount of time. It's only two days, six hours. Well, but we've already advanced time a little bit to get this to periapsis, so maybe it's the same timing. Uh, it's a little bit off, though. It's not as nice as the situation with the... Oh, I keep wanting to say the claw, the recovery crane or whatever. I mean, it is a claw. So a little bit of a radial burn to get our approach to Gilly there. And... Minor adjustment burn. We've got an encounter there. I think we can take that. Alright, so that's got its path to Gilly. And... Alright. How uh, does that do? Uh, well, we've got an encounter. It's a little bit high. Maybe, let's see what an RCS puff in one direction or another will do for us. 
Uh, that's worse. Eh, uh, it doesn't help that much. Alright, 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 right. let's stop. Used a lot of mod propellant as it is. Alright, so this is on its way. And we will see which one arrives first, but my expectation is the shuttle. And my expectation is correct by a little bit. The shuttle gets there first. We seem to be coming in polar, which is fine. We, I mean, we can adjust in any... Oh, wait, we've lost our... Come on. Uh, it's gotta be lying, right? Uh, there we go. Yeah, it, uh, our encounter disappeared for a bit. We should have probably started this earlier. Okay, 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 okay. Well, we've captured around Gilly. Um, well, or not. <laughs> We're only going 0.4 meters per second there. I guess we have to go this way now. We have to go positive? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll get lower there and then capture a little bit more definitively, maybe? That's in an hour, though. I guess maybe a radial burn is necessary. Ah. Uh, Oh, well, that looks good. Let's do that. Okay, we are in orbit around Gilly, so we can focus on the next thing to arrive. Um, I feel that's really high. And I feel like since the node is right here, we could probably do something about that ahead of time. But it doesn't show me my encounter anymore when I do that. <laughs> uh... Come on, that must be closer, right? Right? Well, if it's not gonna admit that it's gonna be closer like that, is it worth it? Nah, let's just go with the plotted situation and bring it down later. So it makes it disappear as it is. It's trying to mess with me. Okay, not a whole lot of time though. But we've got a poodle. Oh, that's the end of the poodle. Well, I'm sure that's done enough. Okay, and so... I'm sure that isn't the heat shield going off. Alright, everything's fine. Separation and ignition. Well, so much for the poodle capturing us quickly. Now we've got a bit of a problem. <laughs> uh, we've got 1 minute and 35 seconds. Come on, little sparks. Time to escape is increasing, so we will capture at some point. Okay, that is a capture. Let's bring that down somewhat. Okay, that's now escape. Um, all right, let's go to periapsis and bring that bring it down more. Pretty comfortable about our comms around here. Don't want to get too low, otherwise we get time warp restrictions. Restrictions, so. That will do for now. I think I want to bring the shuttle down first. It's uh, less complicated of the situations, oddly enough. Uh, so let me jump to that. And we want to make sure that the location we're landing at has ore. Lots of ore. And that is uh, hopefully the location that we're also going to land the crane at, just so we can get our stuff together. There's Shep Guns Debris there. But Shep Guns Debris is not under our orbit right now. Uh, we could easily fix that. Okay, focusing on Gilly. Or, yeah, it does have some ore concentration there. And we can increase the cutoff. And it's like 60%-ish cutoff. Uh, so, but Gilly's going to rotate by the time we get there. So let's just time warp until we're closer. And then we'll see what we need to do. It's actually passing, gosh darn it, <laughs> uh, our long orbit is not helping with getting to the target. Okay, it looks like this next orbit will be fine. Eh, a little bit past, but close enough. There's Shep Gun's Debris. Uh, we didn't have a top node to control from, the oh we do. I did foresee this situation, so we're controlling from there and using the Verners now. I'm gonna 
Well, it'll just be RCS, so that's simple enough. Honestly, it might be easier for me to just control from the cockpit. <laughs> it's a little bit counterintuitive with a shell in front of me to have a control like this. I can't say that the ground looks particularly flat in front of us. It might be better to just land where Shepgun's debris is. Then again, it's gilly. It can't be that bad. In other words, the gravity isn't enough to cause us serious pain. We're actually going away from the target somehow. I don't understand even. It might be Gilly's rotation is a lot faster than our movement. Great. <laughs> That's weird. I think we should just come straight down at this point. Okay, okay, we're down, we're down. It is sort of slanted. Got brakes on. Still reads some movement. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, we don't really have power. Uh, I'll try the fuel cell. And we'll try the drills based on that. Let's see if we get ore. Start service harvester. Yep, start. Uh, no ground contact. Oh. What? Okay, we need to use the upper thrusters to push ourselves down, maybe? Oh, there we go. Weird situation. Um, or maybe not. I don't know, it doesn't... S Wait, what is going on? Why did we stop before, then, if there was... We've, we don't seem to have ground contact now, either. Can we stop doing this? Okay, now there's ground contact. Good thing I put those upper thrusters. Okay, start service hours. Now we're going. Um, it's hardly getting any ore though. Okay, and uh, our contract for new surface outposts on Gilly is complete. We have a facility, quote unquote. That supports 20 Kerbals, ISR resource unit, well, so it wasn't a bonus, right? Uh, cupola, we've maintained stability, and we have the antenna and everything, and we're getting a trivial, trivial amount of ore. Hmm. I wonder if it's even net-net worthwhile to deploy both drills and then convert to LFO uh, with the fuel cells running. Now, well, it is replenishing... LFO, so I guess, I mean, if we got an engineer on here, it'd be even better. Speaking of which, uh, okay, where is Shepgun? <laughs> We're here, uh, just out of our range. We brought Shepgun over here. Shepgun could improve the situation. But anyway, uh, temporarily we're replenishing even though we're running a fuel cell. We didn't even need the second fuel cell. And of course, once we get into daylight, it'd be even better. We didn't even uh, hurt the solar panels. We kept them extended the whole way down. All right, so now the tough part, the recovery rig. We'll just leave this going. I think it'll keep getting liquid fuel and oxidizer while we're away. Okay, well, we can't just jump to Shepgun or Shepgun's Debris right now. We'll just have to land the recovery rig and see what the situation is. So, here we go. Okay, we really don't need the overlay on Gilly active anymore. We do need to target Shepgun's Debris. We are in this orbit. Uh, no, that's Valny scrap. We are in this orbit. Uh, let's just bring it lower first and then see because right now it's probably gonna... Let's see, which way around are we going? Are we going this way around? Uh, 
How much would it take to just force the issue? Not much. I'm trying to think about how it... Well, it'll be close enough. So, we'll do that. And then we'll decouple off the... Crane. The rig. The whatever it is. Or should we bring it all down? Where is its antenna? Did I forget to put an antenna? Or... Oh, uh, no, it's got... Uh, it's got that one there. It's going to be awkward to extend quickly enough, though. At least we've got a relay, and we've got a relay directly back to Kerbin, so that's okay. I mean, another thing we can do is we could just probably send the drone down and pick it up. Uh, we probably didn't need all this business. If it's really toppled, the little this little guy could probably grab it. And the problem is then we'd have to use this to grab the other thing. Hmm. That that might not be a problem. Okay, so that sh that's a steep trajectory down. Uh, which way are we going though? I mean, I'm thinking we're going that way, but maybe we're not. Yeah, we are. Okay. Uh, so that's fine, and we can decouple this. And this does have comms, temporarily. So let's just extend that antenna. Ooh! <laughs> That's a collider and a half. All right. Uh, this is free to go back to orbit, so prograde. That's good. Now, this guy. We'll see. Control from up here. Yeah, the rotation speed of Gilly again. Maybe that would be good. Is that enough lead time? Who knows? And now the long descent down to the surface of Gilly. We'll just go with regular landing gear first. We should have just gone with assuming it's toppled. And then, if it wasn't toppled, topple it. That would have been better. It's easier to get something onto its side rather than get end on when it's not already end on. I sure have had a lot of experience with that with plenty of landers. I'll arm the claw right away, I mean, who knows. The whole rover wheel thing might have been excessive for Gilly. So let's see if we can do something with our engineer. If not, we can try using the little, the mini tug to grab this instead and then save this rig for the other debris that we need to get. Is that our landed posture? I don't know, uh, let's just retract the landing gear. Okay, well, we are obviously too tall here. Let's set the brakes. And let what gravity there is try and settle us down, I suppose. Uh, okay, uh, I'll deploy the wheels. For the time being. Just deploying the wheels seems to bump us up a little bit. Nope. Oh great, maybe we could uh, tilt the pod. It's possible. Uh, hmm. Got RCS, we've got stuff. Flipped into it right now. But I think it's better for a ship gun to do it.
Is roving on on the surface here even possible? Nope, nope. Yeah, so uh not really. <laughs> it's awkward. So what can we do with you, Shepgun? Oh gosh. Uh well. The claw might get it if we just float it up like that. <laughs> uh, hmm. Let's turn into a physics game. Uh, well, let me just see. Engineering mode. I guess we can't. Yeah, we can't deal with it's too big for engineering mode uh, 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 yeah keep going keep going keep going uh, uh, okay uh, release oh shoot <laughs> uh, no that's not gonna work quite where we need it to be almost it's gotten bad again I want to save some EVA fuel for Shepgun to go to orbit if necessary. But then again, uh, Shepgun would have basically infinite EVA fuel. He just can just go inside the crew cabin, right? Okay. Out. We can just knock it into orbit. Yeah. What if we just... But it's tumbling now. But then we've got the time warp trick. Hmm. Okay. We've got a completely different plan now. <laughs> oh, maybe that's not such a good idea, though. I'm not very good at knocking things into orbit. Well, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think... I think we'll just... Oh, we, worry, we can't time warp. Um, I think we'll use the little claw to get that. And we're going to get Shepgun temporarily into the shuttle. Would be good. Because we need an engineer there. Well, we'll put uh, Shepgun in the cupola to oversee mining operations or something. Okay, board. Well, hopefully that'll help. Anyway, I think, yeah, we'll just use the little mini claw to try and grab the pod. But can it do it? It's only got a little bit of propellant after all. Tiny, tiny thing. Doesn't even have a whole lot of comms. It's really reliant on other things for that. We need to go there. Shepgun's debris. All right. No, I'm just gonna go straight with the claw. Control from here. And RCS, go. I feel like we're going into the surface rather fast considering how far away we are from the target. Maybe it's on the other side of Gilly. Uh, I think it's on the other side of Gilly. I was fooled. It's nowhere near here. It's over there. It's through Gilly. Ah. Okay, fine. Bad plan. We need to adjust. Okay, so we should be coming straight down at it, or more or less. I wonder why I'm not getting RCS sounds anymore. Since I came out of... Fizz Warp. Hmm. I guess we do want it end on, but we can deal with that later. It's like docking.
Okay, we got it. All right, now we'll control from here. And, well, SAS on, forward. Up we go. Now, we would like to rendezvous, of course, which is complicated because where the heck is our thing? There's Valny's scrap. See, now, we're nowhere near where we ought to be. <laughs> Uh, you know what, we'll just get into orbit and we'll deal with that whole situation later, but it's important that we go the right way. Okay, well, let's make the rendezvous. Well, let's make an orbit that can rendezvous and not worry about that too much because we have got so many other things to do. We might not want this to do that right away if it turns out that we want to rearrange things somewhat, but... Uh, this will be fine. The uh, inclination, well, let's just zero out that inclination. We don't need to have anything there. And so that'll be tangent at that point, and we can easily manage that if we so choose. Assuming, I mean, I think comms have, comms have been solid, I say that, and we're probably going to have a problem, but uh, at least we're on RCS, so the engines won't keep running if we lose comms. That is a positive. One thing that's a problem is we do have limited electric charge, though. Okay, burning. Okay, well, that gets us into a safe orbit and a orbit that is conducive with a rendezvous with the main recovery rig ship. But let's get that recovery rig off the surface and have it grab Valny's scrap and Valny, and then we're going to have to sort out what we're going to do with what once we get to orbit. So, uh, fortunately, the recovery rig has lots of Delta V. That's its one saving grace at this point. And hopefully, Valny's scrap can fit between the legs, <laughs> basically. Okay, so I think we'll just go straight out with this. Make sure we're controlling from the top. And we'll go with orbit here, and up we go. So we gotta try and grab that scrap, whatever it happens to be. And maybe RCS is not... Yeah, that we shouldn't need it. I don't think pointing at the... Oh, we're already probably overdoing it. <laughs> uh, we're on escape, aren't we? Uh... Well, no, let's not push it. No, we could probably make it relatively easy on ourselves. Yeah, let's not push it. We're basically pointing at the ground because I went on escape here. Okay, so then once we get there... Let's just say we flatten that out. It might not be necessary to do that, but it might simplify things. Now there's something going on over there. That seems close enough, so we'll do that. And let's get from the bottom, or do we want it from the top? Because the bottom is the only attachment. I think there's an attachment node at the top, right? If we wanted to slap something on, maybe. I don't know, I'll grab it from the bottom for now, and we can rearrange it later, maybe. Not quite the way I wanted to grab it, but it'll be okay, I think. Alright, well, we've got that. So, let's get this into... Well, you know what? Okay. So, we've got Valny and Valny Scrap. We've got the Shep gun pod and Shep guns in the shuttle. I think we'll save the rest of the business for next time because this has been just time warping around Gilly and not being able to time warp around Gilly in particular has been quite tedious. So next time we'll see how I get all this stuff together and try and bring it back home. But at least we've gotten what we needed to grab. And of course we got the surface based contract so it's just a matter of getting things back home now. And so the lesson for this episode, 
keep things simple, just make it a tiny little claw tug instead of all this business. This was overdoing it very obviously. But yep, so next time we'll see how it all has to happen. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.